In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the different types of crystals. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about each one. We're going to worry about how do we identify which type each is. Um, remember on the periodic table, we have a line separating metals from nonmetals. I have noted the metals in yellow here and the nonmetals in orange. And that's going to be important when you're trying to decide which is which. The first type that I want to mention is network covalent. Network covalent, there are just going to be two cases of network covalence that you need to know. The two are SiO2 and pure carbon in the diamond form. SiO2 in this case is a quartz crystal. If you think about those two as examples, you'll know a lot about them. Are they hard or soft? Do they dissolve in water? You know diamonds are extremely strong. The reason why diamonds are extremely strong is they have these covalent bonds in all directions. And covalent bonds, which involve the sharing of electrons, are a stronger type of bond than an ionic bond. So for example, if this was a carbon, yeah, that carbon is attached to four other carbons. And each carbon we have is in turn attached to four other carbons. And these strong covalent bonds go through the entire molecule. So this is sometimes also called a giant covalent molecule for that reason. Um, it's one huge molecule. The, so the two you need to know are SiO2 and pure carbon. If you see SiO2 or pure carbon, assume we mean network covalent. All right, the next type is ionic. Ionics are most typically a metal and a non-metal or a polyatomic can substitute for one or both. The classic example is NaCl. In NaCl, sodium and chlorine have traded electrons. So that chlorine now has a negative charge and sodium has a positive charge and they stick together because they're opposite charges. So in an ionic bond, electrons are transferred. And then opposite charges stick together And this type of force is called an electrostatic force, which you may have learned about if you've taken physics. Um, some other examples, besides the classic sodium chloride example, um, when I said we could have a polyatomic ion substitute in, ammonium oxide would be an example of an ionic compound. Um, it could be something like copper sulfate would also be an example of a polyatomic ion that forms an ionic compound. The next one we want to talk about is molecular covalent. Molecular covalent is going to involve one or more nonmetals only. In a covalent bond, electrons are shared in the covalent bond. And something that's gonna be important to know as we go forward is not all sharing is equal. Like sharing of most things. And when I say not all sharing is equal, different atoms might pull on atoms differently or on electrons differently. So for example, when I draw this single line between hydrogen and fluorine, it's implying that hydrogen and fluorine are sharing those two electrons. However, we know that fluorine has a higher electronegativity. And since fluorine has a higher electronegativity, it pulls on the electrons harder. And as a result, the electrons spend more time over there than they do over here. And this can give rise to polar molecules. So with molecular covalence, these are the kind you were drawing Lewis structures for. 
And we said that it's really important to be able to differentiate be, whether it's polar or nonpolar. And the way that you are gonna differentiate is you must draw the Lewis structure. Or you have to have it memorized. But you're gonna need to be able to draw the Lewis structure to make that decision. The last category is a metallic solid. Metallic solids are the easiest to identify because it's a metal only and just one of them. So for example, iron is a pretty classic example of a metal, but it could also include something like potassium. Metals are generally modeled with what's known as the electron C model. It's positive charges that are in a fixed location and then electrons that are free to move and don't belong to any one atom. And that idea that electrons are free to move is what gives rise to the ability to conduct electricity, for example. So if we were gonna summarize and what we need to know in order to identify, we know that network covalent is gonna be these two examples. Ionic, metal plus a non-metal, or a polyatomic ion substituted in. Molecular covalent, non-metals only, and you're gonna have to draw the Lewis structure to decide. Metallic ones are metals only. A typical problem will ask you to classify each of the following as ionic, network covalent, molecular polar, molecular nonpolar, or metallic. If you need to pause for a second to copy down the questions, do so. Okay, so the biggest decision that I make in identifying these is deciding whether it's a metal or nonmetal or both. So CU is just a metal, which makes it really easy to identify. Another one that I can identify really easily is SiO2 because it's one of our special cases. So that one is network. Going to choice B here, strontium fluoride. When I find strontium, I find it on the periodic table in the metal section and fluorine is a non-metal. Therefore, strontium fluoride is ionic. For C, water, both of these are non-metals, which means I'm gonna to need to draw the Lewis structure. If you need to review Lewis structures, go back to those videos. Now, now that I've drawn the Lewis structure and I see that there are lone pairs on the central atom, I know that this is molecular polar. Those lone pairs make it polar. D is talking about O2, which is non-metals only. If you draw the Lewis structure for oxygen, you can see that the two ends are the same. This is not, they're not gonna share unequally, they're gonna share very equally. And if the two ends of the molecule are the same, which is true in all diatomics, we are gonna have molecular nonpolar. All diatomics will be molecular nonpolar. All right, E, we already identified as network. F, finding lithium on the periodic table, you'll find that it's in the first column, which makes it a metal. And it's not bonded to anything, so it's just gonna be a metallic solid. CH4, I'm seeing non-metals again. So I'm gonna draw the Lewis structure. The Lewis structure for CH4 looks like that. So my classification is gonna be molecular non-polar. Okay, we have some practice for you to try. 